Hey, welcome back to another lesson. I'm Jake Lizio, and in this video, I want to talk to you about the Dorian scale. Me personally, the Dorian scale was a really hard scale to wrap my head around. I couldn't really put an identity on it. I didn't have a good idea in my head of what it sounded like. Whereas certain scales like harmonic minor were extremely easy for me to identify and kind of, you know, label. Dorian was always mysterious to me. That might be because I don't have a really strong jazz background. But regardless, in this video, what I want to do is teach you what the Dorian scale is. Why is it a mode of the major scale? I want to help you big figure out the chords of the Dorian scale. And then I want to talk to you about what is the deal with Dorian? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? How can we use it? And where do we hear it in actual music? The only prerequisite for this video is understanding the major scale and major scale degrees. So if you're uncomfortable with those topics, I've linked to two videos in the description. Check those out before you dive into this video. So let's get started. A Dorian scale can be built by using these scale degrees. And today I'm going to build them all starting on A. So A will be my one, A will be my root. And from there, I just have to play a two, a flat three, a four, a five, Five, a six, a flat seven, and then I can go back to my root, which was A. So those notes, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and A are the notes of an A Dorian scale. That's all fun and dandy, but let's talk about the chords. I think that's a little bit more interesting. And to figure out the chords, here's all we have to do. Start on your first note, A, and start skipping notes, A, C, and E. Those three notes, A, C, and E, that's an A minor chord. So my first chord that I'm allowed to play is A minor. Today, though, I want to go a step further. I normally just stop at the triad. Let's add another note to my A minor chord. So let's skip another note. A, C, E, let's skip to G, and let's add that note to my A minor chord. That will give me an A minor seven, which is a more smooth, uh, kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a variation of your minor chord, and I think it's got a little bit more color to it. And when I'm working in Dorian, I really enjoy using the extended chords as opposed to just using the majors and minors. So in this video, I'm not just going to be showing you these triads like I normally do. I want to show you these extended chords. So by performing this operation of just skipping notes, starting on the first note, I got an A minor 7 chord. If I do that again, I can, starting on the second note, I'll get my second chord, which is B minor 7. If I do it again, starting on the third note, I get the notes of a C major 7 chord. That's my 3 chord. My fourth chord would be a D7. I get a dominant 7th chord by doing that starting on the fourth note. Fifth note is E minor 7. Sixth chord is F sharp half diminished, or F sharp minor 7 flat 5. And then the last chord here that we'd be allowed to play is G major 7. And then finally I'm allowed to come back to A minor 7. Now when I did that, didn't this G major 7 kind of feel like that's where I should have stopped? Didn't that feel like we're finally home? And it's because we were. I mean, we are in a mode of major, which basically means that every note I played for you, every chord I played from you, it all came from a major scale. And specifically, it came from the G major scale. But we weren't thinking about G until I finally played you that chord. And that's the whole idea of working with modes, is we're using a major scale, but we're kind of concealing the tonal center of the original major scale. Today, what we're going to be doing is saying, forget about G, forget about that note, let's, let's focus on A. Let's use the notes of G major, let's use the chords of G major, but let's focus on the second note of G major, which is A. And we call that A Dorian. By doing that, I create the Dorian feel. We can hear a little bit of Dorian just by me playing an A minor 7 chord and doing a little bit of improvising using the A Dorian scale up on top of that. Let's hear what that sounds like. smoky flavor to it. It's not really dark and, and violent like minor keys, um, but it's got a little bit of optimism to it and a little bit of flair that I really like. This is the kind of thing you hear Carlos Santana do a lot. Uh, and a lot of different jam bands, they like Dorian because it's got the, the chilled out versions, it's got a, all that relaxing part of minor, but it's got a little bit of energy to it, more so than the minor scale normally does. Now that's what the Dorian scale sounds like just as a lead device, but to me Dorian chord progressions are really fun. Personally, the 1 to 4 change in A Dorian is the only jam you'll ever need if you want to play in a jam band. So our 1 chord was A minor 7. Our 4 chord is D7. And just by putting those two chords together, you get a wonderful little 2 chord jam that just absolutely rocks in a band setting. And that D7, you could extend it into a D9. You could play it just as a D major. Uh, you know, there's a lot of options there, and there's, you know, different inversions are going to give you different sounds. But check it out, just a two chord jam, A minor 7 and D7, gives you this wonderful Dorian flair. Now that 
core chord really is the heart of all things Dorian, in my opinion. So if I wanted to drop the extended chords for a while, and I just wanted to go into my regular cowboy chords, my A minor chord would be my one chord in uh, the key of A Dorian. So let's strum a little bit of A minor. I can go to that three chord, which is C, which is nice, but I'm allowed to do that in the key of A minor. There's nothing unique about that C major, right? There's nothing that makes the C major all of a sudden, this doesn't put me into the key of A Dorian. I'm still, I could be in the key of A minor. But as soon as I play a D major triad, that D major triad really kind of kicks us into Dorian immediately. You're not allowed to play an F sharp in the key of A minor. But in the key of A Dorian, you're allowed to play the note F sharp. And guess what there is in that D major chord? There's an F sharp right here. So to me, you might be able to hear that this Dorian chord progression is kind of wistful. I think of like Bob Seger music, you know, I think of uh, lots of Pink Floyd. And I'll give you a few Pink Floyd examples right away. The first example I'll give you from Pink Floyd is The Wall. It's uh, mainly D minor, but eventually for those verses, we go over to a G major, which is going to be the major four chord. Also in Breathe, Breathe is a famous E minor, A major. So that would be the key of E Dorian, where I've got a minor one chord, and I've got a major four chord. Also in any color you like, we've just got a minor one chord to a major four chord. I just want to make some generalizations about the Dorian mode and how it relates to the other stuff that I work with. To me, Dorian is great if you want something that's kind of dark and morose like minor, but minor is just too much. Minor can be very dark and it can be very sad. And sometimes you want something that's like not that depressing. You really don't want to bum people out or scare them. And I feel like Dorian is a good middle ground. It's not as bright as major and it's certainly not as dark as minor. So I find it's that good, you know, happy medium between the two. I also find, like I said, it works great for Santana as music uh, you know Oye Como Va is just a minor one to a major four that's pretty much the entire song <laughs> looked at how the scale looks all on its own, starting at on A. We've also looked at how it relates to G major. But now I want you to compare A Dorian to A minor, because these two are very, very similar. If you look at the notes of the A minor scale, and if you look at the notes of the A Dorian scale, you'll see the only difference is that sixth note. In A minor, I would have a natural F, right? But in A Dorian, I get that F sharp. So it's a raised sixth. And that's really one of the ways I think about Dorian. I say, oh, it's just a minor scale, but I've raised the sixth note. I have a natural sixth in my minor scale. And it's an easy way to kind of think of things. And also as a lead player, I know that I want to be highlighting that sixth note if I want to create a Dorian flavor. I mean, for example, if, if my jam is just one chord, if the band is just playing A minor seven, then there's nothing that makes that Dorian. You know, this could be a lot of keys right now. This could be A Phrygian. All these notes are in A Phrygian. This could be the key of A minor, right? But there's the only thing that would make it Dorian is if somebody comes in and starts playing north notes from the Dorian scale. And I could do that as a lead player by playing just that sixth, that natural sixth note and surrounding it by some of the other notes of, of A Dorian. Us guitar players, we love the pentatonic minor scale, A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, and all of those notes are in Dorian. So I really get access to that awesome rocking pentatonic shape with all those cool bends and all the things that guitar players practice. I get access to that when I'm jamming in Dorian. And then seamlessly, I can just kind of infuse those Dorian notes whenever I want to, and I get a little bit of that Dorian flavor on top of my jamming. So I really hope this helps you out in understanding what is the Dorian scale and more importantly, understanding modes. Uh, modes are one of those topics there is just an endless amount of confusion on. And I was reading some comments on the internet today and uh, I, I heard somebody talking about how guitar players make it even worse. So I really apologize if this is making things more confusing, but I only know from my experience that I learned the modes in a week. Okay, it took me one week to learn them, but it took me like literally three years to understand them. I just kept thinking, oh, you start the major scale on the second note. This whole idea of tonal center just was completely beyond me. So I hope that by these using these demonstrations, it's kind of 
helping you see these scales in different lights. And I really don't want you to see it in just one light. For me, it was by looking at these things from different angles where finally the light bulb came on and I was finally able to start working seamlessly between these modes relatively and in parallel. So if you like this video, please subscribe, like, comment, share, all that stuff really helps me out. And if you really like this video, then you can check out my Patreon page where you can support these lessons going forward. Thanks for watching.